So here's a question. Have you ever wanted your own life-size suit of armor? Did you perhaps ever want that suit of armor to be, I don't know, Iron Man's? Out of all of his suits, did you really want it to be the Mark III from the first Iron Man film? And did you want it to have lights because you're a child at heart and lights are the best? Did you even originally want to make a full body suit for a high school project, but after realizing how long it would take, decided to just make a bust of his upper body instead and claim it was your plan the entire time? You did? Well, that's a coincidence, because that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to make in this video. This is how to make a one-to-one -one scale bust of Iron Man's Mark III armor. Now I bet you're wondering, what materials do you use to build a bust of Iron Man's Mark III armor? Well, one word, paper, and some other things, but mainly paper. Here I have some 240 gram cardstock. This will be my main building material. Confused? Let me explain. Online, there are many resources for Iron Man armors. They can all be printed out onto paper and assembled by hand. It's a little time consuming, but the results are well worth it. After looking through some options, I found a brilliant design by a chap named Dance and Fool. I've linked to his work in the description. His model will be the archetype for my build. So I begin by printing, cutting and assembling several pieces together to make the chest portion of the suit. Since this is a bust, which if you don't know means that only the top half of the body is displayed, I won't be making any parts that go further down beyond the chest. So after completing the back, I move on to making the shoulders, arm, head and other parts of the armor from over 40 pages of paper. With all the parts made, it's time to strengthen them. But how do you strengthen paper, I hear you ask? Simple! Fiberglass and resin! <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, Fiberglassing is the process of applying resin to a special mat that, when dry, becomes incredibly strong. This method is used to make small boats, for example. However, I will be using it in a slightly different way. For my build, I first paint a coat of catalyzed resin onto the outsides and insides of each paper part. I do this because paper is porous and will absorb the first coat of resin, meaning the fiberglass mat will have nothing to adhere to when applied to the surface. As you can imagine, painting a liquid onto paper makes it quite soft. That's why a thick cardstock should be used when making the parts in the first place. Also, resin hardens quite quickly, so you have to work in small batches at a time. For me, it took two days just to coat all the pieces and let them dry sufficiently. Oh, and I should also mention, resin gives off some pretty potent fumes, so it's best to work in a well-ventilated area to avoid hearing voices or, you know, dying. Now, now, once the resin-soaked paper has hardened, it's a lot stronger than regular paper, but still not quite strong enough to assemble my Iron Man bust. For that, I have to place fiberglass mat inside the parts and then paint over them with more resin. When this dries, the parts become almost like a hard plastic. Speaking of drying, that process takes like another two days. So I had plenty of time to make some tea, admire all 60 pieces of the build and question my existence. Melancholy aside, and the parts are dry. Next comes the very important task of smoothening out all the parts by using body filler and some fine sandpaper. Body filler is nothing more than a type of putty that when dry, can be sanded to a nice smooth finish, as can be seen here on these shoulder bells that I have done. This whole process helps minimize any sharp angles created when assembling the paper parts, but with that out of the way, it's time to move on to the main event. Assembly! Before I assemble anything though, I first have to visualize how I want the bust to look. I decide that I want the head looking slightly off to the left. This means that the neck has to twist. So I carefully cut up the plate segments of the neck with a Dremel tool, you know, because it's like card plastic now, and then reassemble the segments in a twisted fashion to support the head looking to the left, and then point gun fingers at it for some reason. The next segments are fixed in place with more fiberglass and filler, and once it has dried, I permanently attach it to the torso of the bust. I then test fit the helmet in place to see what everything looks like, which was kind of pointless in hindsight because most of these shots came out blurry, but you get the idea. But you know what isn't blurry though? The stand! 
I know that doesn't really make sense, just go with it. The stand connects to the torso and is made from a solid piece of wood. This is so that it's heavy enough to counterbalance the whole build. Now you might be wondering, how exactly am I going to attach this thing to the armor? Ah, well, it's very simple. Pipes. Let me explain. Four PVC pipes will connect to and support the bust. One pipe connects into a horizontal pipe fiberglassed into the middle of the torso, this one here, and the other three then attach to the inner sides of the armor to stop the bust from wiggling about. However, before I attach the torso to anything, I first want to paint it. The parts of the chest are first primed with grey before being painted with red, which I forgot to take a photo of, so you'll see that in a moment. Similarly, I paint the stand black to contrast the red armor that will adorn the tops of its four stable and structurally supportive pillars. Like so, behold! Let's just take a moment to admire this glorious and slightly eh, out of focus sight. Alright, enough of that. The three outward facing stabilizing pipes, their official names, are now securely attached to the armor by means of more fiberglassing. It's then left to dry. The torso is now one with the stand and at this stage weighs about a thousand tons. So in order to shoulder all that weight, we need some uh, shoulders. Oh my god, I'm sorry I had to. Specifically, I need these shoulder belts from earlier. As you'll recall, they've already been filled and sanded and now head off to be primed and painted. Which, after assembling and adding a few details, leaves us with this. But now I bet you're wondering, oh, but Kyle, how are you going to attach these to the torso? Good question. Boom, a spine problem solved. At the top of this kinked pipe spine, I put a teepee's which will have two pipes either side for the shoulders to rest on. Like so. The shoulder bells are then fiberglass to their support pipes in a similar way that the stand was attached to the torso and is then left to dry. So with the shoulder bells drying, I can really get ahead by making the helmet. Boo. As with all the other parts, I first fill, sand and prime the helmet. I then mask off the faceplate because it will be painted gold, not red like the rest of the helmet. Like this. I thought about displaying the helmet with the faceplate open, but ultimately decided to keep it down to give the bust an overall sleeker look. Next I add some detail by attaching pop rivets to key places across the face. This mimics the raw metal look of the real suit. I also attach the ear cone things here. Finally, I accentuate the areas around the eyes and the seam line of the mouth by painting them with black. I also add clear plastic to the eyes in preparation for the lights. Speaking of lights, here's a blinding desk light. Also, here I'm building the pipe support for the left arm along with its wiring. So you know what that means. Next we're making the arm, specifically the left one, and also the only one. I'll explain why in a moment. Here I've painted and attached the bicep and elbow. As you can see, I've also attached the helmet to the neck and faced it looking towards the arm. I now extend the arm pipe support, after which I paint and attach the forearm. Now the reason I've only made one arm is that I want the suit to be looking down at just one of its hands. I'd tell you why, but that'll ruin the surprise for later on. But with the arm installed, I add a few extra details to the overall suit, as well as a whole lot of wiring. Because I've added lights to the helmet, wow, <laughs> as shown in this badly lit photo. Lights will also be added to the hand, which I still have to make. So seamless transition, the hand is the next thing to build. Now this was by far the most delicate part of the entire build. So many little pieces had to be filled, sanded, primed, and not accidentally lost. When everything was ready, I started the hand assembly by first painting just the palm red and attaching a flexible sleeve to cover the wrist which will also be painted red. I then test fit it to the arm. Next, I assemble the five fingers by using a quick drying epoxy and temporarily taping them in place to check their positioning. As I mentioned earlier, I want the suit to look like it's holding something in its hand. So I adjust the hand and fingers accordingly to achieve the desired look. Once I'm happy with the positioning, I remove the hand and permanently attach the fingers in place. 
Next, I have to make the light that goes inside the palm. To do this, an LED strip goes around the inside of a ring I cut from some PVC pipe. Wires are then attached before the ring is covered by a disc of clear plastic. The light is then inserted into the palm, and the whole hand is attached to the arm. And I didn't even mean that to rhyme. Finally, I finish everything off by attaching the wrist shield to the top of the hat. With the shape of the bust now complete, I can add details, starting with the flaps. So in case you didn't know, Iron Man's suit has these flaps, ailerons and spoilers, google it, that will extend from his back when flying. After priming with grey and painting red, I add a few details, such as these silver knobs, to some of the flaps, after which they are ready to be attached to the back. But first, I have to add a few details to the back. So I paint and attach the spine plates here, as well as painting the areas underneath the lower flaps gold. I then attach the flaps. I thought about displaying them in an open position, but similarly to the helmet faceplate situation, I opted for a sleeker, closed look instead. So now there's only one more part to make, the crown jewel of the build, the arc reactor. So all the suit's wires lead to and out of the chest. In true arc reactor fashion, my reactor will power all the suit's lights by means of a battery hidden inside it. Before I can make the reactor though, I have to make this sleeve for it to slide into when placed in the chest. This is so that I can easily remove the reactor when needed. The sleeve is made from more PVC pipe, and after I paint it silver, I feed all the wires through its center and attach it to the armor's chest plate. Now this is where the fun begins. To make the arc reactor, I cut a piece of pipe and glue an LED strip to the inside wall. I attach a silver ring to reflect the light and attach a 9 volt battery as a power source. The 9 volt should have enough power to not only light up the reactor, but also all the other lights of the suit. I hide it and a switch behind the reactor face. Now it's time to hook up all the wires to the reactor, and you can finally see why I wanted to make it look like the suit was holding something in its hand. Hey! So after testing that everything is working correctly, I add the finishing touches to the reactor. Here I make the 8 electromagnets that go around the core. I then solder a wire to each magnet to mimic the design of the real arc reactor. As you can see, I had to grow another pair of hands for this job, a lot of fiddly work. Lastly, a clear plastic cover is glued over the reactor face. It can then be placed into either the hand or the chest. I know this isn't actually how the real arc reactor works, but details. Look at what it looks like when it's lit up in a dark room. Yes, it's blurry, but we can't have everything we want in this life. So with the reactor placed snugly into the chest housing, I flick the switch hidden inside the reactor and it powers on all the lights of the suit. And so, after one month of late nights, toxic fume inhalation and binge drinking tea, my 1 to 1 scale bust of Iron Man's Mark III armor is complete. So all that's left to say now is I hope you've enjoyed following me along in this build. If you've liked what you've seen or have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.